networks, they've been around forever. Telegraph, if it was the Pony Express, or the internet. Networks are what connects us. And what we're seeing today in the stock market is heavily being driven by networks. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about how social media networks are now influencing the behavior of the stock market. This isn't a new phenomenon. I mean, during the 98 and 2000 tech boom, we saw Yahoo Chats was the place you went to go to find stocks that are about to break out or being pumped. The problem with that is, is with the pump, you also have the dump and that's where people drive stocks up higher and then turn around and sell them off at high valuations, sucking in the retail investor, sucking in the misinformed. It's been a part of the stock market for years, since the beginning, about getting behind a certain position and pushing it higher and higher and higher based on a narrative, based on some sort of better good for man. Well, today is no different. We're seeing that with a handful of penny stocks, stocks that have been on the verge of bankruptcy, stocks that just, well, that are just junk. Oftentimes these moves are by individuals, their institutions pumping a stock because they took a position early on at a low price and now they're pumping that information saying, we gotta get behind this. Here's why you know we should be, this stock should be higher and pumping it up over and over and over until it hits a price target that they have in mind and then they exit it. This has been common amongst the penny stocks, below $5 stocks, where you can get a sizable move out of position just based on a couple pennies or a couple nickels. And then COVID hits and all of a sudden the people who are pumping and dumping stocks are no longer institutional hedge funds or big institutional traders. No, it's the stay at home. I just got laid off and I got a check from the government players, also known as Robin hoodies. When Facebook came out, you had Facebook groups and this is where people of like interest got together in private groups and they would talk about companies or investments and that kind of thing. And then COVID hit and new technology came along and new social platforms have come along. And now we have zero commission trading and all of a sudden everybody is a player. Everybody's in the market. Even that 16 year old who before she got told to stay home and couldn't ha go to cheerleading practice is now a stock expert and pumping those stocks that she likes on TikTok. The ease of actually getting data and falling into a momentum groove is really easy today. I remember when the Berlin Wall came down and all of a sudden we saw a connecting of the world through fiber optic. A number of years ago, I was in Ireland and I came to this point off the coast of Ireland and it was, it was the, where the first cable connection to the United States actually landed on Europe and it was in Ireland. Today, we're using satellites. Today, we're using fiber optic. They're even developing fiber optic that has a, a center drilled out of it so that light can travel faster. And there are hedge funds in Chicago who are paying for this development and wiring fiber optic all the way to the servers at the New York Stock Exchange, all to make quicker trades. Social media has become the faster than light speed way of moving stocks. And recently we have seen that in a handful of stocks. Today in the Wall Street Journal, there's an article about GameStop. GameStop is a brick and mortar store where gamers went and bought their games and they buy them on a DVD disc, take them home, slide them into their uh, gaming console and off they go. Well, the world's changed. Fiber optic has made that happen and faster download speeds have allowed us to actually game online, eliminating the need, the need for a brick and mortar go buy the game type of store like GameStop. Then GameStop's fortunes all changed back in November, December timeframe when Ryan Cohen, ex-CEO of Chewy's, came in and bought 10% of the company, giving it a legitimacy, a potential comeback from the depths of bankrupt, potential bankruptcy. From there, 
the retail investor, the stay at home investor, the person who got laid off back in March and April, who started getting checks and opened a Robinhood account, all of a sudden started jumping on Reddit. Reddit is a place where you can see stories, post stories that uh, you've seen. There are groups, and in this case, there are investment groups. And these investment groups started getting behind GameStop. Every morning, every day, 24 seven, there's somebody on there talking about GameStop in the early November, December, now January. And in 1st of January of 2021, this year, GameStop's over up over 300%. It makes 40% moves in a daily basis. It can go up 40 or 50%, 100%, and then come back down very quickly. And what you're having seeing happen right now is the network effect or the social media effect on the stock market. Recently, AMC Theaters was on the verge of bankruptcy, but they ended up raising $917 million in capital that could take them through most of 2021. Okay, this is a theater company. Then all of a sudden, the network social media guys jumped on this stock and took it from the depths of low single digit price tag to now in upwards of 100% moves in a given day. And all of a sudden it has made AMC a very cash rich company because all of a sudden they got capital to take them through most of 2019, but their stock price has gone up. And since their stock price has gone up, their value as a company has gone up, which has made them a more, more solid, financially stable company. Now, back in March of 2020, we saw this same effect happen with Carnival Cruises. We saw it with Delta Airlines. We saw it with Hertz. Hertz, unfortunately, didn't get the social media network effect as GameStop has or AMC Theaters has because they ended up filing bankruptcy anyways. The problem with all of this is when they all go home, when the social media you know, pump and dumpers get out of the way and say, you know what, we're moving on to this company or the world gets back to normal, which I doubt will happen anytime soon. The network effect is powerful. The question is, has investing changed? Have we seen a complete reversal of how we will go about investing for the future? And I would say, yeah, partially. Just like the internet, just like uh, uh, fiber app optic, we're seeing a change in how we are doing things. Prior to the internet, data was limited. We were unable to get data like we can today. Investing was limited to the newspaper every morning. When you got it, you looked in the back of the business section and you saw all the different stocks that had traded that day and what their prices were. If you were lucky as the internet developed and you had a, say a Bloomberg terminal or you're connected some way or another, you could get data. But now it's different because of the internet and because we're so interconnected and because of speed and the inexpensiveness of actually collecting data, we're now competing as investors against everybody. Which brings us to the social media network again. These guys are able to gather the same data as the institutional investors, the hedge funds, the pension funds. All of a sudden, everybody is almost on an equal level. Well, when you get a group of people with like-minded thinking, all of a sudden things can change. As we have seen with the network effect when it comes to GameStop, AMC, Hertz, Delta, Carnival. In the last year, we have seen individual retail investors who typically don't represent much of any uh, volume on the New York Stock Exchange, all of a sudden they have become 25% plus of the volume on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, the other night I was on Reddit and I was looking through one of the boards uh, that you can join and I was watch reading the comments from these guys talking about a certain company who is, you know, a single digit uh, stock company uh, who you really would never buy because of any fundamentals or because of what they're doing. But these guys were talking up like tomorrow morning, we're all dumping into this stock. We're going to move it higher. We're going to do this, that and the other. And it was just like this rally, this cheerleading, this just this mob going and pumping stocks. And what did you see this morning or what did I see this morning? I saw that stock jump 
jump like double digits. And all of a sudden it went up and then it went down. And this is the fear I have for the average investor, the long-term investor, the I'm saving in my 401k investor, because all of a sudden the hype and the excitement, it's an emotional thing. And we grab on to emotional events. And when people are buying companies that are on virtually on the edge of bankruptcy, I mean, think about this. The vaccine rollout isn't going as fast as we thought it would. Well, if AMC theaters are saying you have to be vaccinated or they won't open up uh, because the, of the coronavirus and the lack of vaccinations out there, well, is that company actually going to rebound that $917 million that they had raised? Are they just going to burn through it? When you have just down the street from me, you have a theater that sits empty, generating no cash flow. How can you get that company to rebound and get go higher unless all of a sudden you eliminate the, va the coronavirus and you all of a sudden have everybody going back out to theaters. But isn't it more comfortable to actually rent the movie on Apple or Netflix or Hulu or Amazon? Isn't it more comfortable? I can stop it. I can rent the restroom. I can go make a meal, come back and watch my movie. I think this world is changing in such a great way because of the coronavirus that the network effect is actually pushing companies that really, if coronavirus didn't happen, they wouldn't exist today. And this is where the danger comes in, is getting caught up in the hype, getting caught up in the euphoria. The fear I have is, is that a lot of people are buying into this and they don't really understand there is a machine behind this. The reason it keeps going higher is because of quant, uh, quant funds, funds that run on algorithms. And when they see high volume stocks like GameStop or AMC or Hertz or Delta or Carnival, and the volume gets over and above and the stock price keeps going, they just pile into it. And they're piling in at millions of shares per second, driving the stock price higher. But as fast as they, it can be driven up, it can also go down as fast as we've seen with these companies. So as an investor, you've got to be on your toes and you've got to understand what am I really buying into? Am I buying into a company that's going to recover or am I just buying into hype? And if I'm buying into hype, what's my process of getting in and most importantly, getting out and taking my profits. So has this changed investing, has the social network effect changed investing for the average investor in a way? Yes. But there is one thing that still stands. At the end of the day, this is about companies making a profit. This is about companies generating revenue, positive revenue. This is about companies changing the world. And if your company is a brick and mortar gaming company and I'm downloading all my games or my kids are downloading their games via the internet, how legitimate is that stock run up? How, when you get down to the fundamentals, what is the most likeliness that company will stay in business? And that's where fundamentals really still stands. And it has legitimacy. I still got to believe if a company just year after year after year loses money and doesn't really change the world, what's the point of owning it? I mean, yeah, Amazon lost money forever. And then they turned their whole server network system into what we now know as businesses who are now using their server, ne server network to generate, to ride off that server network to host their websites. This was what made Amazon profitable. But what if Amazon didn't actually have that happen? What if instead they just sold books and stuff and continuously lost money? Would they still be around? Maybe not. Some point an investor wants to get paid. And if there is no pay, you go away. In the end, this comes down to profits. Is a company profitable? Is it changing the world? How long will it take for that company to rebound from mere, mere almost bankrupt to now high, high frying stock? At what point does the fundamentals really start to kick in? And this is what you, I believe you have to do your homework around and risk manage around understand what we're seeing in the, in the stock market today is not really real. 
I mean, it is if you book your gains every day. I mean, if you could have bought into XYZ stock uh, yesterday, last night, and then sold it this afternoon and made your 20, 30, 40%, and you book the gains, well, that makes sense. But if you think this is a recovery thing, if you think that, oh, this is just gonna keep going and going and going, let me remind you, from 2007 to 2009, the financial crisis happened. And in 2005, they were saying the same thing. It'll go higher, it'll keep going. During the tech boom from 95 to 2000 or so, same thing. This'll never end. 10% returns a day, that's just the norm. It's happened throughout history more often than you think. And at some point, it all comes to an abrupt end. And it all comes down to liquidity and fanfare. And when the fans exit the stadium, the game's over.